Are you exploring other filament types? Well, today we are going to talk about Jerry's filament. Join me inside as we discuss this one. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said today, we are going to discuss Jerry's filament. Specifically, we're going to talk about their PLA Plus and their PETG. So, kind of one of those things. These guys did send me a spool of black uh, PLA Plus and a spool of their white PETG. So as we discuss that, I'm going to kind of hop between the two. So kind of hopefully you guys can keep up and I don't make this very confusing. But we're going to talk about the filament. We're going to talk about how it did. Would I buy it again? And then uh, just kind of critique it as we look, as we compare it to some other ones like Duramac and Inland. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the content. If you're new to the channel and new to 3D printing or anything like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we talk about all kinds of things as of how do I print that to the materials that we use to print. So stick with us as we talk about all kinds of printers, tools, all kinds of stuff you need to that comes in handy doing this job. So make sure you stick with us. Now got a question about 3d printing make sure you leave that comment down below definitely want to know those questions because not only does it let me help you but it also gives me content to help out a lot of other people so definitely leave those questions down below and of course if you can share the video with anybody you know in 3d printing or just wanting to get started or thinking about the hobby it'd be much appreciated so let's hop in and let's talk about this jerry's filament all right so what i'm going to talk about with this video we're going to look at the Jerry's filament. We're going to look at some of the inland filament. We're going to look at the quality of how the filament printed. So one thing I am going to bring up is quality, color, texture, um, even though that's more of a printer thing, but also just kind of how did it do? Did I have any problems with printing this one? I'll tell you right off the bat, didn't have any problems. Didn't have any errors. Didn't have anything like that. Printed just fine. And the bulk of the Jerry's black, is in this unfinished helmet that is coming to the channel of a Star Wars Rogue One Death Trooper. So as you guys can see, this black looks fantastic. Unfortunately, I was over ambitious in the project and ran out of the black filament, but you guys can see it's got a nice shine to it, which I'm very impressed with with the shine. And just the texture of it, it printed so well. It's so smooth. I didn't really have to adjust my print profiles or anything to really accommodate it. It went right in. Now, one of the things I want to keep in mind, because this is the PLA Plus spool, the only thing that was kind of weird, I'm going to talk about this for a second, because it's kind of important, is I'm not used to seeing this. 195 to 240. Now, that's a really strange bed temperature range for for a PLA filament. Usually I see these anywhere between 185 and 220, maybe 235. But to see something popping up at a 240, that that's getting into ABS range. And that's a little concerning if your printer's having to go that hot. Um, kind of one of those things that's, I don't know, that, that temperature range seemed a little high to me. I printed it easily at 215 um, with my Ender 3 and my Odin F5. Odin 5 F3, get the name right, um, I print it easily. And especially what I've learned with the Odin 5 is any filament you put in there, it just sits there and goes nummy, nummy, nummy. It does a really good job of working on that. And the Jerry's filament was no question, no different. My Ender 3s, they're a little bit pickier. They, I don't get the, my Ender 3s sometimes. They're really good with PLA+. Plus. If I try to use just PLA, my Ender 3s just kind of say no. Nah. So, but... I put this stuff in my Ender 3 and it went fine. Even with my 3D printing pen, it worked great. And I love the shine on it. Cause that's where we come into talking about it, comparing it to other filaments. So with that, here's a sample of the Inland. It came out really nice. This is one solid print of Inland Black for a Boba Fett helmet. It came out really nice. Doesn't have the nice shine though. That was my one thing I did notice about the Jerry is it gave me a much better shine. Um, and I noticed less texture lining in it. Um, I did use a CR10 for this one. It was all e-stepped and everything. So we got good quality. But again, coming back to the Stormtrooper, because the white, that's the PETG they sent me. That's the that is the white PETG, and you can see the seam lines are black. That's because I use a 3D printing pen instead of glue. 
to make this one solid piece. And I love the model because it is easily wearable. And if you guys want to see the finished product of this model, check out a later video coming up where I show you how to actually print this guy. And I'm actually going to go through the filling process because I got a lot of caps and stuff because it was pr all printed in small pieces with the smaller printers. So, but you guys can see, I'm going to bring this in here, a very nice shine, very little lining. Um, the print just did excellent for what it was. And the filament... I gotta say for a gloss, this filament worked really well. Cause that's where I'm gonna talk about the Duramec filament. Duramec black. It's more of a matte finish compared to the gloss. And one thing that I've run into with Duramec that I did not have a problem with with this guy was you guys can see, it's even worse over here. I ran into warping. This is PLA plus, just the same as the other. And I ran into warping issues with the Duramec filament filament that I actually had to run my bed hotter to keep it attached which not as always you do what you got to do to get every filament's different but all in all I was really impressed with the quality I got out of this would I use this filament again yes now price comparison with inland I get my PLA plus with them I buy it spoolless so I get it for about $17 for one kilogram these guys are running about 19, which is very comparable to, actually it's a better price than a lot of PLAs out there. You can get these on Amazon, a link is down in the description below. So it's kind of one of those things, I like this filament. I really like this filament. I was really kind of surprised because I've been trying a lot of filament. A lot of companies have reached out and asked me to try their filaments. And I'm doing just that and I'm making the videos in regard to them, but building projects with them and making videos. So this guy, you want to see how I printed this and how I constructed this and want to see more of the finishing, stick around with the channel to make sure you catch that because this should come out right before Halloween is the plan. But even the PETG, I don't print with PETG, PETG a lot. I'm not a huge fan of PETG. Um, it had, don't get me wrong, it has its uses. It's an important filament. Do not rule it out. Just because I don't use it very much does not mean you shouldn't. I'm going to pull this up here because here's their PETG. Um, this is another spool that I've actually purchased. It does run hotter anywhere between 20, 230 degrees to 250. Now, that is a pretty normal heat range for PETG. I've seen PETG go all the way up to 260. So, and the bed temperature, they do recommend anywhere between 60 and 80. Um, PETG, I've always kind of learned, run it up more towards the hot end. And also, when you're laying this down, especially if you're using glass, you might want to push your nozzle up a little bit so it's not so squish, so it doesn't adhere so horribly to the glass. Um, PETG is notorious for that. I've seen several people break their glass trying to get it off. Um, if you do have it, stick too hard. Stick it in the freezer. I know, sounds stupid, right? Stick it in the freezer for 10 or 15 minutes. The PETG usually will just pop right off. So there's a helpful tip for the day as well. But in all in all, Jerry's filament, will I use it again? Oh, you betcha. So hope you guys found this one entertaining for one, and two, found it very informative. If you've got more questions about the Jerry's filament, please let me know. Um, also, you know, like I said, I use this pretty much in all the range of printers I have from the CR10 to the Ender 3 to the Odin printer. So definitely it works in anything. It's compatible with almost every 3D printer out there that uses FDM. Um, if you try to use it in a resin, well, I, I got more questions for you if you're doing that. So um, just kind of one of those things. If you've got more questions, let me know. If you're new here and you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure to share this with your friends if they're looking for a good filament to order. Links for this is down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoy and we'll see you in the next video.